One thing, um, I this might be a good opportunity too, since we have a little time um, here. Those of you who have been involved in an effort in your own state, I'm thinking Cheryl, Monica, there are others here probably too, John, Candace. You know, anybody have a especially, you know, relevant story you think you want to tell about that experience? Cheryl, you know, why didn't it happen in Michigan when for a while there it seemed like it was really going to, back in those early years especially? Cheryl, why didn't you make the company? Yeah. Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do wrong, Cheryl? <laughs> That's why, um, I, I, I said this to Warren, that I, I'm very cynical. I feel you know, I used to be one of those people that would say, oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> And it, it, I think it has to do with, you know, I'm sorry to say, but administrators, I worked under um, one who said, don't print anything negative, you know, and then the students were supposed to figure out what that meant. <laughs> and, and, and Senator Yee, you, you had, you said such nice things about administrators that, you know, they have, you know, goals and educational plans and, you know, um, and, and in Michigan we hear we want to keep the students safe. And in, in my opinion, it's that, they, they don't want a phone call from an angry parent. That's what it boils down to in Michigan, I feel. That, um, that, that, and that, that was what I always heard when I, you know, well, I got, a, I got phone calls and I'd say, how many? And, you know, you know they'd never answer that. But I, I, um, I just feel like it's more of I, I don't want anyone to think I don't have control of this school. And that's why I don't want students to have uh, First Amendment rights. So I, that's where my where I'm cynical, but then of course I'm always hopeful um, that that something will change. Right now, the uh, we have a bill in the House and, and the Senate, um, and of course the bill. They've been introduced, Cheryl. Yes. Oh, yes, but I they're. Well, I mean, you know, they're still active. But I see. They're going to die. So, right. Right. Um, a slow <laughs> death. <laughs> <laughs> and and one of the re one um, in the Senate. Um, uh, where the re Republicans are in control, and uh, the the chair of the education committee, um, and, and this blows my mind too. His children are in a private Christian school near Holland, the west west side of Michigan, um, and you know that bill will he won't even bring it up in committee because it's you know, just uh, why sh he doesn't have to. So why why would he? Um, but, but on, on the other hand, you know, I, I agree with that, that conservatives should be concerned about this as well because you can shut down a conservative editorial or piece just as, as easy as a, a liberal one. And so. we saw them take the um, offensive for the Bond Heads for Jesus case. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, the conservatives rose yeah. up yes, in support of, yeah. of the student uh, because if you can say, if you, if you get in trouble for saying, you know, Jesus, I've got some pot for you. You you get in trouble for saying, Jesus, I've got a lot of love for you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was their thought. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so one, um, one point I, I would make about our our experience is that that uh, it was sort of a perfect storm back in '97 when we did this, and that's why, why it was so discouraging that the governor vetoed it and happened to be one of our alums too, which is not a great time. But anyway, um, the. Uh, all the lobbying, all the phone calls and letters from students and teachers really do, those, those really do make a difference in that uh, I recall uh, Randy Swickle and I had testified at, in the, at the Senate, Senate uh, uh, Education Committee and so we heard from a couple of people that there still could be some problems so that afternoon. We, in fact, we then went right and, and uh, and made some phone calls to people and say, you know, call Senator so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and that afternoon, Randy and I went into somebody's uh, senator's office and we were talking about it. He said, yes, I just had five phone calls about that. So he was very impressed about with, with that sort of thing. And then when it, it uh, well, even before that, when it, uh, when it after passed the House, and we were heard, well, the uh, senator, whoever from Champaign or Urbana, who was the chair of the uh, Rules Committee, might not let it out. So I call him up and say, you know, we'd like for you to do this. He said, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. And then so I call the uh, John Foreman, the publisher of the Champagne News Gazette, the newspaper up there, and we had four or five others. I said, go over and see him immediately. So they did. I mean, so he, in mass, you know, 10 or 15 people went to his office in Champagne and said, you really shouldn't release this. And two days later, he released the bill. So, I mean, those types of things do, do make, a, make a difference. 
You know, the efforts uh, a couple of years ago in Indiana. It was a two-year program, too, <coughs> much like Illinois. Um, uh, that bill passed overwhelmingly. Uh, and I'd be interested in Senator Yee's ideas on this, is one person, the, the Republican leader in the Senate, uh, was totally responsible for not get, letting that bill out of a committee, and uh, despite overwhelmingly, overwhelming support. Uh, and, and I guess I'm wondering, sir, you know, how do you neutralize something like that? Is that just politics? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, the, 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 the chair of the Senate uh, uh, education committee was really not a fan of our bills um, and I guess we have a reputation of rolling chairs we don't do that too often but in in my office um, I think uh, Jim and my communication director they sort of pride themselves of um, of a senator uh, kind of pushing his way around so so you know they, they like to do that I think they have a lot of fun at my expense, I would tell you that. <laughs> uh, but, the, you know, the, um, you, know you, you, you do have to kind of select the author carefully uh, because you, you, you want an author that's willing to kind of really push hard and not worry too much about the consequences. Um, and you have to do that. And then you have, I think, you have to have an author who has s sort of some bipartisan reach so that you can kind of get the the other uh, votes because there there are going to be uh, some members in my caucus that are not going to go there and you know they, they they have good relationships with administrations or whatever it may be so so you're going to need to get votes from the other side so what you want to do is to be able to kind of push the issue forward and then be able to reach over to the other side and pick up some additional votes, and, and that's how we were able to, uh, you know, get our bill through. John, and then <clears throat> Monica, experiences in Ohio. <clears throat> we put forward legislation in 1988, and <clears throat> it, it, we had good student support. We had good support from the media. We hit a liberal Democrat. Uh, House Education Committee person who said we demand local control of our districts and this is a dead bill, period. And I mean that was so I, the conservative liberal thing doesn't always match up. I mean, and we didn't we really I guess didn't do our job in making sure we had a way around him or a way to deal with him. And he was just ironclad and was not going to move. You know, this all goes back to what Jim said earlier of the vital importance of having somebody who knows the process directly involved. Yeah, Monica, what, what was the experience in Alabama? shall be uh, subject to prior review to change it, just one word, all 
publication self oh, shall be God. gone. So we were on the verge of stripping away the current freedoms had one Bill Fuller not been there in the galleries that day, motioning to the um, rel relatively newly elected representative who was a former high school newspaper advisor who was sponsoring it, motioning to her to withdraw that, that first effort. So this is key to me. <laughs> this is, I think, it's really key to have someone who knows the process who knows the law and who is who is a lobbyist who can monitor it because um, you have to be very careful to make sure that you protect the, the freedoms that are currently there. Our lobbyists that <clears throat> work for us were the ACL, the Iowa Civil Liberties Union, and the Library Association. The education people wouldn't touch it. Um, the freedom of information people on the newspaper side worked with us, but the actual newspaper association didn't help us, but didn't hurt us. But some of the people from the Freedom of Information Council also lobbied for us. Um, the only reason we got out of committee, seriously, is because, to be real honest, um, someone didn't return a phone call to a nice little old lady. And um, she told her son, who was one of the most powerful politicians in Iowa, that her phone call had not been returned. And so he got on the phone and suddenly it's out of committee. So it helps to have, I think in Colorado there was this group of nice little old ladies. They were, that's just, exactly what they were. Yeah. That's exactly what they were. And they were constantly, Pat Pasco actually, and the actual bill getting passed is not something I was a part of. I was just a blissfully ignorant high school student at the time. and. Um, but she came and spoke to us, uh, our our group, um, last year, to take us through what it was like. Because I think I think some of those people who were instrumental in getting the bill passed are, are starting to move on, um, both in every in every <laughs> aspect of that. But anyway, the story is getting lost, and the fact of the matter was, because we are talking about maybe doing an advisor protection piece, and one of the things she said was that it was. It was people who literally gave up their lives and sat on the phone, little old ladies who sat on the phone, calling and calling and calling until people would pick up and listen to them, that literally gave up their lives and just took on this fight. And, and I kind of go like this, I have two kids and six preps. You know, I mean, that's, that's what I think about when it's coming, but, but that's what she said. It, it had to be a constant effort. Candace in Illinois. Just Quickly, yeah, in Illinois the first time, this was kind of pre-James, this was 1988, and we had a, a, a meeting that we got people together to talk about maybe we should do some legislation, and all of a sudden discovered that there was a bill already, you know, in process. But long story short, the person who had presented the bill was one who, at the end of that session, in an article in Chicago Magazine, said, he was listed as one of the, what, eight worst legislators. Wow. Um, and somebody was quoted as saying, yeah, you, you like to, sometimes you even vote against Levin's bill, it's even if you don't agree with him because he's so annoying. Oh, so, God. you know, this was the, the good person on our side. We had another similar thing with that bill, though, because it did move its way along, and we did an awfully lot of lobbying and letters and had, had things from teachers and students and everything. But then there was an amendment to it, and their amendment, not quite as bad as yours, but almost, was, uh, you know, sort of using tinker language and saying, you know, that, that there was unprotected speech like libel and disruption and, and, you know, obscenity. But prefacing each one of those statements, it says, what the principal says is libelous, obscene, <laughs> disrupted. And, and so we were convinced that what would happen would be, you know, all these people we'd lobbied would think, oh, this was the bill that you were supporting, and since it seemed like such a minor change, so we did indeed. Mm -hmm. yeah, you that, know. that happened in 99, the year after we almost got the bill passed. We introduced it again in, 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 in 99, and that got added, and at that point, he said, just kill this sucker. We don't even want to want to deal with it. <laughs>